Hello everyone, Commissions. This is Ali and I say with another video tutorial for you guys. And uh, today what I wanted to talk to you about is an instrument that has been around for quite a while, an ESX3002 file, which I have actually never made a video about. And this is a very interesting file and is of uh, great value in specific situations and specifically for those people who are very interested in minimally invasive preparations. And I figured I'm going to spend a little bit of time and show you a case uh, of the use of the ESX3002 file. Okay, so the 3002 ESX file is a 3002 endo sequence with a booster tip which means that it is non-heat treated and therefore it has very high torque resistance and it has a booster tip so it can actually uh, go down the canal uh, fairly easily after you prepare the canal to a size 1502. My recommendation is to use this instrument at about a 300 RPM with a 0.6 newton centimeter um, um, torque, OTR torque value on the endo sink. But the main reason for the use of this instrument, frankly, is so that you can combine a 3002 with a larger taper instrument such as a 2006 or a 2506 endo sequence file so that the combination of the two can create a variable taper with a large enough apical diameter on a molar which is a 3002 at least and then a large enough taper preparation which would be a 2006 or maybe even a 2506 depending on the canal. So uh, this is a very interesting way of doing things. It's a crown down technique. So you use first the, uh, let's say your 2006 instrument. So you can use it as an orifice opener and get it pretty far down the canal to around a, you know, a couple of millimeters, two, three millimeters from the apex. And then having prepared the apical diameter to a size 15 uh, instrument, in this case, I always use, I don't use 15 hand files, I use the 15 endo sequence scout. I prepare it to that size and then go from the 15 straight to a 3002 ESX file, which will then prepare the apex to a large enough or a wide enough diameter apically. And I, then I follow that back up again with the 2006, get that all the way to the apex. And at that point, I would be, you would ask, well, what kind of a cone are you going to use to fit, fill that? And I would be using actually 2006, got a percha cone. And you will say, well, didn't you prepare it to a size 3002? And you're going to fill it with a 2006? And the answer is yes. And the rim around the apical area of that cone is going to be filled with a biceramic sealer. Remember, the main point here, uh, again, with hydraulic condensation, is that you need to have a gutta pressure that goes to the apex and a 2006 uh, cone will fit because you've used a 2006 um, file in the sequence file to reach the apex and you will uh, then have that little bit of rim of sealer of biceramic sealer around the apex to fill that that apical area anyway you know you, this is one of those cases you're going to have to see so uh, without doing too much theory here let's take a quick look at this one case which is a more advanced type of a case anatomy of a um, mandibular premolar with a fairly s-shaped curve and a necrotic tooth that i handled with a specific technique of using the 2006 as an orifice opener then instrumenting the canal to a 1502 in the sequence or a rather esx scout then go straight to a 3002 ESX file and then bring in the 2006 all the way to the apex. And this shows how using pretty much two main rotary instruments, I managed to uh, do this case with a follow-up. So without further ado, let's take a quick look at this case. Okay, so this mandibular second premolar was referred for endodontic therapy. As you can see, a periapical lesion is present around the curvature. It's a severely curved root, uh, tooth number 20. And what's interesting is the tooth has a virgin um, coronal um, state. It doesn't have any restoration. So when we look inside the mouth, we can see at higher magnification the presence of what is actually a uh, an invagination on the enamels, an enamel defect that has caused the infection of the pulp. And um, this is an, one of those interesting anatomical defects that causes uh, apical lesions and, uh, and necrosis. So we isolate the tooth with a rubber dam and use the saber cut burr from the rebuild endo axis kit. As you can see, it cuts like butter right through the area where the invagination was because I wanted to make sure I remove all the biofilm. So I access through that space and already very quickly get access to the uh, coronal part of the pulp chamber. And then now what I'm doing is using the E 
14D ultrasonic tip on the Forza V3 to kind of slowly blend in the axis preparation. So at this point, I find that uh, following drying the area, there's still a little bit of a larger lip than the ultrasonic can remove. So what I do is I use the, um, the DuraCut long diamond burr from the axis kit and basically blend the whole thing in into the axis preparation. And again, once again, do some fine tuning with the ultrasonic tip. So at this point, we have the initial axis preparation, and it's time now to see what we have for available length. And the way we do that in these curved canals is to just use a slightly curved number 10 hand file and just basically drop it down the canal and see how far it goes. And in this case, it actually does go to about a 22 millimeters without any heavy instrumentation. I'm trying to see what is the available length. So I get the secondary isolation with a caulking material and now moving to a size 2006 endo sequence file. Now this is a non-heat treated and you can see as I'm doing is I'm basically using a rhythm motion with three light strokes and driving it down getting close to that 22 millimeter mark on the tooth and after each rhythm uh, motion I'm using my ultrasonic now with just plain sterile water uh, and the U-file to remove any debris that's in the canal. So what I'm doing now is I move to the use of the uh, 1502 ESX uh, scout file, which is connected to the endosync, which is connected to endosync AI apex locator. And you can see that as you can hear, we have now reached the apex. So the endosync stops the file and I know it's at the apex. So I take a quick radiograph to confirm and you can see that the 1502 scout has now very nicely gone around this S-shaped curvature and reached the apex. So the radiograph confirms the shape. I take a uh, confirm the length, which is 25 millimeters. I move to the use of the ESX uh, 3002. Now, the 3002, as uh, we've talked about, is much more um, of an apical shaping file rather than cutting on top because the taper has been already pre-flared with the 30 with the 2006 and now the 3002 once again using the rhythm motion in this case after just a couple of rhythm motion already reaches the apex so this is very nice so we have prepared this instrument just with a couple of files to a coronal shape uh, shaped and then the 3002 to the apex this was at 30 300 millim um, uh, 300 rpm now i moved now to the 2006 the same original um, endo sequence 2006 to finish the preparation and get all the way uh, down and you can see after just a few rhythm motions with ultrasonics uh, in between to remove the debris uh, from the canal, I have reached the apex with a 2006. And now I move to do my passive ultrasonic irrigation and I'm using the um, uh, the U-file. It's very important at this point, I have hypochlorite in the canal and I'm using the, um, the U-file size 20, but I'm not trying to push it to touch dentin. It's basically free in the canal. And uh, once I've done my full irrigation and a little bit of negative pressure, I'll try to fit in a size 2006 um, biceramic coated uh, endo sequence cone and take a radiograph to confirm. And it looks good. So I remove the gutta percha and dry the canal thoroughly. And I place the biceramic sealer to, in the coronal half of the root. As you can see, I'm using the advanced protocol by injecting directly into the tooth, which I recommend to do only if you have a microscope so you can see how much you're injecting. I then use the same endo, uh, the ESX Scout 1502 to push the, um, the sealer down to the full working length and thereby coating the canal walls. That's an important part of the whole process so that you can eliminate any vapor lock. I then proceed to uh, gently cement the that the the fitted cone and uh, coat it. And, and then what I'm doing actually here is I use manipulated by hand to get around that curvature. Since there was a little bit of a step in that area, I uh, rotate the uh, the cone with my fingers so it can be fully seated. I'm just confirming that it's fully seated to the to the length and uh, then. Uh, I uh, use the Endopro 270 to sear off at the orifice level while my system pulls out the handle. And uh, at this point, I move straight to the size 10 shelter plugger to spread the gutta percha right at the surface of the orifice and move on to a size 9 and start to condense 
in the perimeter of the gutter percha as it meets the dentin so that I can close off any exposed uh, sealer that is there. At this point, I just have to remove the sealer and the canal walls or in the chamber walls, and I'm using the ultrasonic with water for it to very quickly clean off the chamber. Once the chamber is clean, I then dry, and once for, for one final time, I use the uh, number nine plugger to just condense the gutta percha around the perimeter, uh, and then proceed to place the uh, endo restorative material, which is a long-term provisional and a base, and it's multifunctional. And as you can see very quickly, it can fill it all the way up. It's a dual cure self etching type of a uh, biceramic resin that I just uh, cured the surface and here we have the uh, final case and the post-op radiograph that you can see we managed to get around the curvature and uh, pop the little lateral canal in the area of the lesion coronally and here is the case at about a one year recall on the tooth showing complete healing of the lesion and an asymptomatic tooth. As you saw, this combination is a pretty interesting combination for some of the more challenging cases. So the fact that the, th uh, the 3002 ESX file is uh, non-heat treated, it means that it will have very good torque resistance, so it doesn't unwind that quickly. Uh, but at the same time, it means that because of the lower cyclic fatigue, you should be operating it in more difficult cases at about an RPM of 300 rather than the normal 500. So use this at 300 RPM with a torque of 0.6 newton centimeter and gently with the combination of either SSC, which is a single stroke and clean, or at the most a rhythm motion, which is really no more than three strokes before you take the file out and wipe the flutes clean. And you will see how quickly it will get down to the apex if you've already had a path to a size 1502, either a hand file or the ESX scout file. So I hope this case was uh, um, you know, demonstrated a kind of a different way of doing instrumentation. And you might be thinking at this point, Ali, you have a million different ways of instrumenting the canals. And that is true. The bottom line is that we are just trying to remove the biofilm. And there's no one way to skin the cat. It is, in fact, as many ways as there are files. And the more important concept here is to understand the main objectives and concepts of crown down. And as you saw in the video, adequate irrigation using the ultrasonic so that you can get beyond those spaces that you have cleaned and uh, you can get fairly predictable results using these techniques. So if you like this video don't forget to uh, share and comment below about what you thought about uh, this technique and the use of the 3002 ESX file and uh, I'll see you in the next video and until then for Real Dendo I'm Ali Nese and let's save some teeth.